Hello everyone, it's Julie from SproutsAndStems.com here, and today's video is the Fall 2024 plant tour. So I'm in my room because we're going to start here. Yeah, there's been some changes, nothing too crazy. Everything is now inside because we had a cold snap last week, so I had to rush to finish getting the rest of my plants inside. And my collection, I think, has gotten a little bit smaller. I consolidated some things. I got rid of some things. I just was in a little bit of a slump this past few months and I just needed to make things more manageable and less overwhelming for myself. Um, but yeah, so we'll get into it in just a second. But please take two seconds to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any new planty content from me and check out the links in the description. Links to where you can get all of these plants in the video will be down there. And just an update, there's no October plant update video this month because this basically is October plant updates. Uh, that's it. And now I'll get into the tour. First and foremost, we have this little kitty cat taking up this big giant chair because she obviously needs the whole thing. And we'll start with the window. So we have this planter. Let me put you against the white wall. That'll be easier. This little planter with a few different things in it. A small Diefenbachia camouflage cutting. A two neon pothos cuttings. And then a skeleton key pothos cutting. Orchid, the last bloom officially fell off, so now it's just chilling for the uh, fall winter season. Spanish moss, just on this dream catcher type thing that I made because I just needed something to put it on. And maidenhair fern. Sorry, I'm trying to get you a better background. There we go. Maidenhair fern that has a love-hate relationship with me because it's constantly dying and that it's constantly regrowing. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're just letting her do her thing. And now, above my bed, I put those two antler plant hangers that I've shown off in a few videos. And so first one, actually, let me get on my bed so I can, oh yeah. <laughs> first one is Philodendron Painted Lady. I was having a little bit of like a stem rot situation and I repotted it, changed out the soil with like a better, more uh, airy one. I think it was having trouble drying out. And um, it seems to be better, but this one stem is still kind of giving me some problems. So, but overall, seems to be okay. And this side, spiky, spiky aloe. Love the look of that. I think out of the two plant hangers, this one's definitely my favorite. They're basically, they're the same. I just did like slightly different styles. I like that one the best. And now we have Raphidophora tetrasperma that I propagated from the mother plant up here. Mother Raphidophora tetrasperma. So pretty. She loves it up here. And then I also put my ponytail palm up here for now. Not the most light. Up here, not totally ideal, but it'll just kind of chill until I think of a better situation for it. So that's that. And now we'll go here. Now these two plants, these are not staying there. This is just temporary. These do stay here. They really seem to like it. Hanging off this door right across from the window. Uh, philodendron micans. Got some pretty, pretty new leaves. And then 
neon pothos, nice and full. It's all like looped up and over itself, so it looks extra full. But yeah. Usually to water it, I'll just hold like a bowl that I use for plant stuff under here and I'll just water it because it's just easier than taking it off and bringing it to the bathroom. Now, spider plant with lots of babies. I haven't cut any off yet this year. I will at some point, but I just love how cute and curly they look sticking off the mom. And under here, we got lots of uh, root situations. Overall, pretty happy plant. A few, uh, a few crispies here and there, but I think it's okay overall. I was so nervous bringing the last of my plants inside because there were stink bugs like all over the spider plant. So I like dumped it in a container of water and then like shook it like crazy and definitely probably shocked it a little bit. But I was like, I'm not bringing, <laughs> I am not bringing bugs inside. Now we have Maranta Silver Band. There's lots of new little growth. So hopefully that will eventually catch up to the mature pretty growth. Maranta Silver Band. More of a cool silvery hue. Doesn't really have any red on it. And now we'll go into living room. So this is the one plant that I don't have a place for yet. I've kind of just been putting it here during the day, moving it into my closet at night so Giselle doesn't knock it over when I'm sleeping because she will do that. Um, I might just get rid of this at some point, but I want to keep it as a backup cutting for my larger Monstera plant, which I'll tell you why and show you in just a minute. But so there's this. And this thing, I just got this, so I haven't had the chance to hang it yet. But this, I'm going to put where those things on the wall are right now. And this is actually a coat hook, but it can move like this. And I'll hang a few different lightweight plants off of it. So... I think that's going to be a good solution. I'm really excited and probably both of those plants will go on it and one or two more. And now coming over to this corner, we have the Enjoy Pothos in the book and the Pearls and Jade Pothos was in the greenhouse cabinet and I brought it here just to switch things up a little bit. So pretty. And then enjoy in the book. I'm getting kind of bored of it, but I need to just like sit with things for a little while and stop just like changing everything the second I get bored with something. Okay, that's that. And then Nepenthes, which I also had to bring inside, which I'm sad about because this, most of my plants thrive when I move them outside in the summer, but this one just absolutely, absolutely thrives. Look at this giant. Come on, come on, show yourself. Look at this giant, giant picture. Now, last year when I brought this plant inside, all the pictures died off and it didn't start producing pictures again until the next summer. But last year there were like maybe a quarter of the amount of pictures that are currently on it. So I'm not sure what's going to happen this year. Hopefully they don't all die off. But uh, yeah, we'll see. This is um, Nepenthes Alata. And like I said, I'll have everything linked in the description. And string of hearts. It's not hanging down at the moment because Giselle will like be totally fine with something and not care about it at all. And then all of a sudden she'll 
be interested in it again. So I had this hanging down for like nine months and she wasn't trying to get at it. And now all of a sudden she was trying to get at it. So it's uh, just hanging like this right now. Same thing with the greenhouse cabinet. She, with the door shut, she's totally fine. She might like sniff around it sometimes, but she never tries to actually open it. Well, all of a sudden she did start to try opening it. So now, at least for now, this thing is <laughs> in front of the door. But, um, okay, and we'll go to the top and then finish within the greenhouse. Now here's my little seashell cutting that you guys know I've had for a while. Little pearls and jade cutting just in some sphagnum. Super cute. And Monstera. Now, this, I honestly don't know what is going to happen to it. Last week when I had to rush to bring everything inside, I knew I would have to kind of just like chop this in half from what it used to be in order for it to fit up here because it needs to fit up here because Giselle needs to not be able to get to it. And this is the only place in my apartment. Um, I, I know I keep talking about her, but she's like the reason for everything. So I had to prune it a lot to get it to fit up there. And because I had to rush to do it all in one day before things froze overnight, I didn't really get to strategize that much. I think I'll put some photos on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about, but I literally just went to town and like hacked the root ball to pieces. It was extremely root bound. I pruned off probably the majority of the roots, but I also pruned off like half the plant. So I don't think it was like that bad what I did, but it definitely, I definitely wish I had more time to think about that. Um, so that was over a week ago at this point and things are still seeming to be doing well. Some things already had some sun damage on them. So I can't tell if like some of the yellowing is previous damage or because it's unhappy. So I'm just kind of waiting to see. And then, so this, I actually had two Monstera cuttings in water. This one is just one that was like that. And then this one and this leaf was another one that I potted into that pot to kind of balance things out a little bit. And uh, yeah, I'm just waiting to see what happens. This I'm keeping as like a backup kind of, even though this one is going to yellow eventually, but I'm keeping this cutting as a backup in case something happens to this plant. And yeah, I'll just see what happens. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to just keep always pruning this one until I have like a better situation and place to keep this word safely out of the way. Okay, so that was a lot. So now we will finish with the greenhouse cabinet, which I redid a little bit. I added one shelf back. Okay. And lemon button fern. Also a love-hate relationship. Oops. <laughs> Ripple pepperomia cutting in water. A few sad strings of turtles that I'm trying to see if I can revive the plant. And this is a jade bonsai I got recently. I don't know if I've showed you yet. Jade bonsai just from the Home Depot. Monstera adansonia cuttings that were in a bigger container, but I re-potted because they're in leka and water into a smaller container that could fit in here. Um, pothos, giant pothos cuttings from my friend that I just like to have in water. And there's also some other various cuttings like Monstera and a fishbone cactus cutting in there. Obviously, it's kind of hard to <laughs> see each individual thing. This is my fishbone cactus. 
I, you'll see in just a second, my bigger one, I split it in two and I potted the smaller piece just in here. And then last but not least for this shelf, we have, this is just, this is a node from one of the monsteras that were in water. This is just a node with a ton of roots on it. And after I cut off whatever I wanted to cut off, I was like, oh, I have this big healthy node. Let me just see if like something happens. So nothing is happening yet because I just put it in there last week. But if something happens, I will, I'm sure it'll be a planty update at some point, or maybe I'll make a whole video. We'll see. Last but not least, and I'm going to sit a little scraggly baby spider plant. This one is Peperomia verticillata red twist, I believe. And it's so like, it reacted so fast when I put it in here. Basically the next day, it was kind of just like flopping out a little bit. The next day I come back and all the stems are like, whoop. <laughs> So that's always cool to see how plants react to things. And this is the bigger part of the fishbone cactus. This is a philodendron micans. Why are you looking yellow? I don't like that. Diefenbachia camouflage, which I repotted at some point. And last but not least, this enjoy those that's been in here in this corner for a while. Sorry, I'm making so much noise with my feet on the floor, but um, yeah, happy in this little corner. And that is that. So thanks so much for watching everyone today. If you liked it, please subscribe to my channel and check out the description for links to all these plants. And I'll see you guys next time.